the enemy. You are on a battlefield. The militaries are working against the people. We are in a lawless reality. It would be helpful for you to understand what you face. Get your health now! Let's go! Light him up! Everyone, this is got another video for you here. Right now, we are literally witnessing the destruction of America by design. And this didn't just happen overnight. This has been a long-standing plan in the works. This right here? Yeah, they put them there This the purpose. setup. They put them there on purpose, Y'all know where we at. They gonna set them on right up on the rail. Y'all yeah, know what building this is Come right here. Now. I ain't even gonna say what name it is. Hey, where do them bricks go to? Where do them this bricks is go setup. to? We gotta do better. Ain't no damn construction. Gotta do better. Ain't no damn construction. Ain't no construction, bro. This country was already bought and sold a long time ago. This country has already been looted a long time ago, and the people shackled through a debt-based system of slavery, who have also been divided through a sophisticated propaganda machine, weaponized and turned against the people. And now we are seeing the start of the fireworks. protests are gaining momentum. We're seeing just a standoff there between police and protesters. We've certainly seen it turn violent with several cars, police vehicles that have been torched there. Many buildings around the city have also gone up in flames. And this is happening in around 30 states around America. Many, many cities across the United States are in complete chaos right now as rioters are taken to the streets and either overwhelming the police or sometimes we see the police are being ordered to stand down and let this organized chaos rule the day. And for those of us who understand biblical prophecy, we can see how the Vatican's global world system is truly in play today. The Club of Rome, which was established in 1968, which has been charged with the task of overseeing and regionalization of the unification of the entire world, it is in full force as we can see. This world system is built upon Vatican control. This is how it was before the old world in America, and this is how it is today. Truly, the kings, kings of, of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Which the Vatican openly admits, the popes of Rome are the ruler of the world, and all the emperors and all the kings and all the princes and all the presidents of the world, they claim are as these altar boys of mine. The United Nations is soon to be the visible global world government, but under the dictates of the Pope's orders, which is clearly today at work in taking down the old America. They must do this in order to globalize their entire world agenda. So long as the old America is in power and seen as the ruler of the world, the new world order cannot move forward.
we can see through President Trump's recent declaration of a national emergency that the Constitution has been removed and no longer exists. That declaration has turned over the rights to FEMA, which is nothing more than a Vatican-run entity to help ensure the old America's destruction. FEMA is now locking down the old America, putting her to death through this orchestrated chaos of the Vatican. Now I know that many of you are thinking that this is unconstitutional, the president cannot do this, he has no right to do this. Well, he claims that under the Insurrection Act, he has every right to do this. And the military is on standby as we speak. Unfortunately, with the rioting that is occurring in many of our cities around the country, the voices of peaceful protest are being hijacked by violent radical elements. Groups of outside radicals and agitators are exploiting the situation to pursue their own separate and violent agenda. First off, I want to introduce you to a guy that many of you probably already know, but perhaps a few of you don't. His name is Yuri Bezmenov, a former KGB agent who accurately predicted the current state of America almost 40 years ago, detailing a slow process to defeat America through psychological warfare and demoralization through a slow roll process called ideological subversion. He described as changing the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interest of defending themselves, their families, their community, and their country. Through the first phase of demoralization, which Bezmenov says takes place over 15 to 20 years, he says that through compromised individuals like politicians, teachers across the public school curriculum, college professors, news media, and entertainment, folks are programmed to think and react to certain stimuli in a certain pattern. He said that even if you prove that white is white and black is black, you still cannot change the basic perception and the logic of behavior. So it's a slow roll over the span of decades, so slow that the majority don't even realize it's happening. And if you were to prove to them that it was, it wouldn't matter because the facts don't matter anymore. That's how you know the implementation of such a plan has been successful. I don't know about y'all, but I'm personally seeing this play out in my own social circles particularly from people and professors whom I studied with in college, who cling so tightly to their own identity politics that nothing and no one could convince these highly educated individuals to even look outside their own mental tribalism. Every stimuli played out across their computer screens or their television screens sends them into a fit of emotional outrage. Yet they have no original talking points of their own, only regurgitations of those parroted across CNN or even Fox and late night talk show hosts. Following demoralization is a two to five year period of destabilization in which a nation's economy, foreign relations and defense systems are targeted and weakened. And following the success of that, there would be the third stage, a good old crisis. One in which Bezmanov explains would bring a violent change of power, structure, and economy. And will be followed by the last stage, normalization. That's when your country is basically taken over and the people are living under a new ideology and reality. So let's say Bezmanov's words are true. Where do you think we are in this plan? If I had to guess, we're at the crisis stage. Again, continue to learn my surroundings. This is about a mile from my house. And so if you look behind me here, we have a very long river uh, back there. And um, it comes from the mountains this way. And there's a bridge way down there where the military is act actually positioned right now. And, you know, every time I pass by there, I stop and smile and wave at them and pay my respects. We don't need to be going around, um, you know, getting involved with like these protests and, and stuff that are going on. 
Yeah, it's very wicked. It's very bad that they do those things and for the most part you know this world gets along and it's these uh, Vatican institutions that are under her wings that are just stirring things up just like a video um, I had made uh, about two years ago and such uh, about exposing the Ku Klux Klan and the agenda that they had way back then and and the stuff that they had stirred up uh, was just absolutely horrible and if you take a look at this, you can see um, in this, in this uh, clip uh, what actually is behind the, the KKK and what have you is actually behind what's going on today. And you can put the pieces together and see that it is the Vatican. As we know, history shows how the true Christians fled to America to escape religious persecution that was provided by the Roman Catholic Church who is the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth who would seek to kill God's children which the book of Revelation chapter 17 expounds on which is the institution that was clearly bent on the church of God's destruction and being crushed like venomous snakes for being heretics Rome continued to press forward like a flood and went to America to destroy her from within as Protestant America was growing in number and in power, they tried to accomplish their work through these secret societies, and many prominent men who we thought were true to America's cause were not. Rome was in no wise ready to give up her seat and her power over the world, which this dragon, Satan, gave to her, and so she had infiltrated all walks of life and even created more societies to fulfill her purpose. History shows how the papacy had evil men already hard at work in destroying America. The general of President Washington, Mr. Lafayette, had clearly seen the works of Rome's secret society starting to destroy America from within. The general Lafayette, under President George Washington, had stated the following. If the liberties of the American people are ever destroyed, they will fall by the hand of the Roman Catholic cult clergy. The Jesuits had their military fingers in every branch of America in her beginning, with the likes of many ruthless men. But there is one who we are going to introduce to you today who did such an evil work against America, which many Americans have praised this man till this day. This man's work had led America down the path of division through racism. The man infiltrated and destroyed much of what America was trying to become, a Christian nation after the Creator's heart. Meet Albert Pike, who is still standing in the heart of Washington, D.C., where there is a large statue and monument honoring one of the founders of the Ku Klux Klan. The statue is a tribute to the influence of Pike's organization. Inscribed on the base of this statue are the words, Poet, the terrorist anthem of the KKK, was his most famous literary work. In jurist, he was called the KKK's chief judiciary officer and reputedly wrote the organization manual for the terrorist anti-black movement after the U.S. Civil War. It has power in the executive branch and the Congress, and it is decisive in the courts. It has great power in all branches of law enforcement and the military. Albert Pike was the Grand Dragon of the Ku Klux Klan in Arkansas. Albert Pike was also a Luciferian, ex-Confederate general who infiltrated that army for the Antichrist Pope, and the most powerful Freemason in North America, and was a member of the first Ku Klux Klan which he helped this evil creation come to existence in 1866, which he had murdered countless people and caused a division to rise up in America 
that is still existing today between the many whites and blacks which would have never happened if Rome would have kept their evil fingers out of America. Pike was also known as a secret Jesuit co-agitator and murderer of white Protestantism and was an organizer for the KKK with Nathan Bedford Forrest. Forrest appointed him Grand Dragon of the region with the Klan disband for Forrest in 1869 after the ratification of the papal pope, the modern-day office of Caesar, had sent forth the 14th Amendment of 1868, which Pike maintained ties with the existing Klansmen while he remained a Masonic brother to his contemporary occultist, Karl Marx. Pike's new KKK would be used by the order to bring forth the armies of Rome in secrecy and strengthen his powers in America and weaken Protestantism and at the same time would spread hatred between whites and blacks in both the North and the South with their murderous lynchings against the whites and the blacks. It is these secret societies of Rome that spawned all these evils that would create a legitimate grievance necessary for America to be divided and to be conquered, which we can see happening today that their plans have been successful. This movement would also later launch its Masonic civil rights movement intended to bring about its racial program for the 20th century, the amalgamation of both races proposed to destroy white Anglo-Saxon Protestantism and North America. The KKK order had created grievances whereby the Protestants of the South were drawn into the Civil War, which they were annihilated and were betrayed by leaders beholden to the fear of death by Masonic, oath-bound masters secretly subordinate to the Jesuit general who is the military for the Pope unto this day. After the failed war of the Southern independence, fought by the white Protestant people of the South, the victorious Jesuits finished erecting two of their despicable idols in celebration of the black Pope's military victory, newly created 14th Amendment American Empire. These despicable monuments, these idols of the Roman Catholic Church was placed in America, which is called the Washington Monument, 1885, and the Statue of Liberty, 1886, which has everything to do with Satanism, and Satan being that woman, that light bearer, that victor over America. The Statue of Liberty had been designed by the Roman Catholic French Freemason, Frederick Auguste Bartholdi, and formally received by the Jesuit ruler, Mayor of New York, Knight of Malta, William R. Grace. And if there is any doubts regarding the Ku Klux Klan not being an invention of the Roman Catholic Church to destroy America and white Protestant America and the blacks and causing the division between the races to annihilate this union in America that was taking place to develop America as a Christian nation, take a look at some of these pictures which clearly shows the connection between the Roman Catholic Church and the Ku Klux Klan. Peace.
And so, when you take a look at what's going on around the world today, you can see how this was all pre-planned a long time ago, way back in the time when America was first being established, because George Washington's General Lafayette even said that America would fall at the hands of the Roman Catholic cult clergy, because they are invading and in, in, intruding into everyone's lives for one purpose, and that is to bring this world down to its knees to worship the beast in his image on Sunday and to pay homage to Satan, the power who created it through the institution of Rome that is working against the kingdom of God and against his commandments, which governs the conduct of this whole universe, which Satan rebelled against in heaven and was cast out for casting contempt upon the very law that this world has rejected. And thus, you see the plans of Satan coming to fruition in demoralizing this entire world. June is LGBTQ plus Pride Month, and in the past 50 years, it has grown into a massive money-making machine with an estimated 1,500 Pride events globally. But due to the global pandemic, June of 2020 is looking much different. There are about close to 400 Pride organizations right now around the globe who have to cancel or postpone Pride. Most Pride organizers have pivoted to virtual platforms. Interpride, the overseeing body for World Pride, is co-producing an international virtual event called Global Pride. And bringing in a final crisis to stir up a world full of corruption and full of problems and full of division so that they can globalize their whole entire new world order system and to bring everybody down to their knees to worship the beast in his image. It's like I said, when we look at this chart that they had created before, in the COVID-19, where you can see their platform and how they plan on neutralizing this whole entire world global system into worshiping the beast in his image. They have their internet governance. They have their ability to speed this all up. They have their global health, which is, is going to be used to uh, control the people from buying and selling what they really need for their body and their system to be able to function in this world where they're going to create all types of synthetic uh, foods and such that are going to make people even more sick and they're going to speed this whole uh, governance up that you see in this whole system here under COVID-19 where they will have agile governance and what have you and when you look at this like I've said before when you click on all these things it will tell you what their plans are and how they are demoralizing everything and unstabilizing everything in the world and how they have brought about this COVID-19 crisis to eventually cause this world to supposedly be moralized under the Vatican's control and global false worship system, which there is no moralizing about it. They're using all the problems in the world today to bring about the, their whole agenda in having people go to church on Sunday so you can learn morals. But those morals are working against the kingdom of God because God has set a day of worship and that day of worshiping Him is on His seventh day Sabbath which is ordained, sanctified, and blessed by the Son of God that we are to worship Him on that holy day which the Bible says in the Ten Commandments, the Fourth Commandment, it says to remember the day and to worship Him above all. We are not to worship the creation which Satan is and he used the Roman Catholic Church, the Vatican, the universal church of this world to deceive the people into believing that Sunday is the day to worship the Creator when it's nothing more than a normal working day to worship Satan, the, the, the final Antichrist that's coming 
And we have to prepare for that time that's coming because we are not to be worshiping the creation over the creator as Satan wants us to do. And soon, as you see, the police in America bowing down to their knees and even joining the protest are simply showing a symbolic message to the world that we can't handle this. We're going to turn this power over to something else that's coming, which we know they have been putting UN uh, vehicles and troops and Islamic uh, vehicles and Humvees and stuff over into American soil so that they can bring about this global new world order. They've got to bring down the second beast and then they can exercise all the powers of the first beast through the second beast. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Once they have America under control and under lockdown and under the commands of the Roman Catholic uh, cult clergy, okay, who is controlling the state, which you can see they're controlling the churches today through the 501c3 and the alike around the world. Pastor Jeffers, yes. Prayer. Let's pray together, may we? The 501c3 is a demonic contract that the churches have entered into, and it's having a demonic influence over the churches. This is one of the reasons the church is falling apart. They become part of the world system. And the other thing that it's doing is that the church has a slavery mentality because they want to be governed over, and we're the ones that are supposed to be governing. Well, how can you govern when you have someone governing over you called the federal government telling you what you can and cannot say in the pulpit? I don't believe in my heart also that a church, a house of worship, was never meant to be a corporation because now it gets kicked back to the state. And if you have a state like California, unfortunately, that has rogue leadership, they can come in and say, hey, you're going to go by our guidelines, our state constitution, or whatever the case may be. And if you're a house of worship and you're a corporation, you're still going to preach homosexuality or transgender from the pulpit. Everyone's going to have to answer to this system for letting the Vatican globalize their whole world agenda just like they did in the dark ages when they were trying to cause everybody to worship the beast at their time and if they didn't they were also killed just like it's going to be in our time very soon and i saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of jesus and for the word of god and which had not worshipped the beast neither his image neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands and we've got to get ready for that time because they're one mind, they're one hour with the beast, and the eighth beast, this, this threefold union with the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet are working together like three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. And we've got to get prepared, brethren, because this one hour, this one mind, were the eighth beast of Revelation chapter 17. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Which will stand up in full force and in full might to do one thing, to kill the elect of God. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. Because we will not adhere to the principles and practices and the doctrines and the commandments of men. And this war is coming. This final great controversy battle between truth and error is coming. This battle between worshiping the creation over the creator, it's coming. And we're all going to have to decide, whoever makes it through all these phases, that when Satan appears and he comes tempting us and we make it into that phase, we have to be 
full of the latter rain, where we cannot be moved, where we are standing firm on the rock of our salvation. For thou art the glory of their strength, and in thy favor our horn shall be exalted. For the Lord is our defense, and the Holy One of Israel is our King. He shall cry unto me, Thou art my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. And so remember, brethren, whatever goes on in this world, no matter how much chaos and no matter how much demoralization that the Vatican is able to do, no matter how much chaos and planned pandemics they may create and cause like 9-11 and all these other virus pandemics that they had done before, whatever that they do, let us not be troubled. Let us understand the will of God. Comply with the Ten Commandments. Keep those commandments. Prove who you profess to be. Do not just give lip service because lip service is going to be tested in the end. And if you're going to go through that phase and that hour of test, then you are going to have to stand. And when you receive that latter rain and you receive the message of God to go out and proclaim this truth, you've got to act it out too in your daily life because that is the refreshing presence of the Lord proving who you profess to be and having Him in your life. That is a big part of the latter rain, is you receiving it and developing the fruits and the character of the God in heaven that we love and that we serve. And if God is refreshing your life today, you are receiving the latter rain because without the true vine, you cannot be a part of it. You won't have the fruit bearing tree planted by the rivers of water producing a lot of fruit, okay? And so, please brethren, do everything you can to stand in this great test that's coming because there's many phases that are going to take place soon that are going to go one, two, three, four, bam, and then it's finished. Probation closes, and then God's wrath is going to pour on this world, and they're going to suffer in such a great way that God's going to bring a desolation to this world and their system. For in one hour is she made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. And he's going to make it a desolation. And as God has spoken it, he's going to bring it to pass like he has always done. So until next time, brethren, stand true, be firm, and, and know that God loves you. And we care about you and giving you the truth. And just get prepared as much as you possibly can. If you can't get out in the country, do everything you can to continue to do so. And if you still can't, look for ways to get out when it gets really bad. So that you can also learn to get out there now. And, and start studying your terrain, seeing the things that you can eat and the things that you can drink. Remember to pray over everything that you have that God may give to you like in the time of Elijah and, and, and eat it to the glory of God and drink it to the glory of God. And I pray for each and every one of you to be able to stand firm in these last days and to make it to the very end of all things and to wear that crown of life for eternity. We love you. God bless you all. And keep contending and striving for the faith. Amen.